Welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac. I've lived in Japan for 15 years and I'm about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of my life. I'm going to spend one week making Japanese sake and I'm doing it on one of the most magical islands in the Japanese archipelago, Sado. Join me on this special journey into the heart of Japanese culture. This is it, the start of one week making sake at the Gakogura Musugi Dama. Whenever you see this, it's a sign you're going to have a good time with sake. And that's what I'm hoping is going to happen over the next seven days. Obata Shuzo have created this incredible place and it's super appropriate that it's within an old school, a place of learning, continuing its purpose on into the 21st century. Things kick off with a short introductory meeting and overview of the sake making process. So, what was all that in a nutshell? Our goal is to make a low alcohol Genshu Junmai Dai Ginjo. Days one to four are all about making the rice koji, adding koji mold to steamed rice, which creates enzymes that break down starch to sugar. From day three, we also start prepping for the sandang jikomi, the three-step building of the fermentation mash, which begins in earnest on day four and keeps us very busy until day seven. Before we got here, the rice that we'll be using was polished. What we're gonna be doing is washing it, soaking it, steaming it, cooling it, and then the rice that we've produced will be used for two purposes. One is the steamed rice that's gonna go straight into our moromi mash, our fermentation mash. And the other one is to produce koji. And koji is the key differential between Japanese alcohols and Western alcohols. Sake is Japan's national drink. And here it's commonly called Nihonshu, literally Japan's alcohol. It's a brewed beverage. It's fundamentally very different to wine, which is made from grapes. And grapes have a lot of sugar, so just add some yeast and boom, we get fermentation, turning sugar to alcohol. Sake, however, is made from rice. And rice doesn't naturally contain sugars, but it does have starch. And koji mold is the magic ingredient that provides the amylase enzymes to break down starch to the sugars essential for fermentation. One of the things I'm super excited about is getting involved in koji production. Today, on day one, we'll be doing the hikikomi, bringing steamed rice into the koji making room and inoculating it with koji spores. We'll also be doing the kirikayashi, so re-breaking up of the koji and then putting it to sleep like this. We got straight into it with some rice steaming. This is a koshiki. There's some rice steaming in there and soon we'll be shoveling it out and then laying it out on these blue boards. Time to meet the most important person in the kura, Tokuji Nakano. He's the toji the master brewer, the chief of the sake making room. He oversees the team of brewery workers, the kurabito, which literally means brewery person. Toji Nakano inspects the results, firm on the outside, but soft on the inside. Perfect. When Toji Nakano gives the go ahead, the kurabito quickly starts shoveling steamed rice onto smaller mesh covered trays. At Gakogura, they steam rice separately depending on its purpose, whether it's for the fermentation starter, for producing koji, or for adding directly to the mash in the main fermentation tank. And this affects the moisture level required. This batch today is for making koji, 
it was steamed for 50 minutes and has a lower moisture level. Just grab the last one straight out of the koshiki. So now we're letting the rice cool. We're going to be inoculating it with korgi mold later after we've cooled it down a bit. 20% of the steamed rice is used for korgi making while the rest is added directly to the fermentation tank. The rice is not just left to cool, we want it to cool evenly. I can see why the kurabito have asbestos hands. This central part here is super hot. This repeated process of turning, separating and spreading the rice lowers and equalizes its temperature throughout. 30 back-breaking clump separating minutes later, the rice is cool enough for the next step, the hikikomi, bringing the steamed rice into the muro, the korgi production room. The muro is a high-tech, squeaky clean, temperature and humidity controlled space. Currently so hot, it feels like a sauna. And we've got to spread out this rice very thinly on this table. However cool it looks, it's a bit hot for this jacket. Things you learn on day one. This is a natto free zone. We've been banned from eating these fermented soybeans, which are a traditional Japanese breakfast staple, because their bacteria is more powerful than koji mold. Fine with me, I'm not really a fan. Special koji thermometer. In koji production, the starting temperature of the rice is crucial. Ideally, it needs to be between 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. Once the rice temperature is correct, we can start inoculating it with korgi kin, korgi mold spores from the fungus, Aspergillus oryzae. The torgi weighs out the exact amount we need. There are different varieties of korgi. Almost all sake is made with yellow korgi. This is the crucial ingredient for saccharification, transforming our starchy steamed rice into sugary rice korgi, known as kome korgi, or just koji. The next step is tanekiri. First, Toji Nakano shows us how it's done. Each brewer has their own unique korgiography. High, low, fast, slow, but the aim is to spread it as evenly as possible. The mold releases enzymes that saccharify the rice by decomposing its starch into glucose. Korgi styles can be classified according to the level and pattern of growth of the korgi mold. The two extremes are called sohaze and skihaze, but there is a continuum in between. For a particular type of sake, the most appropriate style of korgi might lie somewhere between these extremes, and our korgi is closer to skihaze. It was an honor to be a part of the Korgi dance. I feel like magic is happening in front of my eyes as I watch the Korgi mold clouds gently settle on the rice. The next step is called Tokomomi. We roll the rice back into the center and spread it flat again, breaking up more lumps as we go. We then sprinkle more korgikin so that the spores are uniformly spread throughout the rice. Mm -hmm. 
あの一番最初の時あの光沢が。Toji Nakano tells us to closely observe the appearance so we can see how it changes over the next few days as the Koji goes to work, transforming the rice starch into glucose. こんな風になって、こうなってたら、ここだけ冷えちゃう。ね。うん。隙間が。だ理想は本当は丸。うん、丸。うん。このような感じ。丸がいいから。で角がないような感じ。だからえっと、こいつ見れた方がいい。あ、そうなんだ。外側はここだけ冷えちゃう。We pop in a couple of thermometers and wrap it in blankets so it warms up to about 43 degrees Celsius. Good night, Koji. I say good night, but it's actually still only 10 a.m. Hygiene is an extremely important part of making sake. One of the very worst things that can happen is contamination. Making sake very different to drinking sake. These mesh cloths are covered in sticky rice grains. So how do we get them off? Well, it's not easy. I'm told not to let the cloth touch the ground or my body. This is a real workout. Sloshing the mesh around in cold water, rinsing and repeating for over 30 minutes until every grain of rice is gone. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. These are sake bukuro, cloth bags that were used for a previous sake pressing, and we're trying to clean off the sticky leftover sake leaves. There's a time honed technique to every step in sake production, and this is no exception. With a small amount of water in the bottom, lift up the bag, keeping the top spread open to catch air. Trap the air in the bag, flip, submerge. And as you squeeze it against the side of the tub, the force of the water clears the sake leaves from the pores. It's the last one. I did the last bag. I quite enjoyed that. It's time for lunch and a refreshing drink. At Shimafumi, about 20 minutes drive from Gakogura. There's no better spot to enjoy a Sado apple, Okinawan shekwasa cocktail, and beautiful views across the Japan Sea. Mid afternoon, and we're back in the muro. Just like magic, the rice is still there. Now we have to check the temperature of our rice mound. It's around 42 degrees Celsius. Koji Nakano gives a green light for the Kirikayashi, and we start breaking up the mound. Even with this paddle, you can see it's a struggle. As the Koji mold grows, it interconnects the rice grains, which hardens the mound. We spread it out evenly and start breaking up the sticky clumps. It's an interesting texture, it's a lot more spongy. Making sure there's an even distribution of texture and temperature is a key part of sake making. So we repeat this process several times to bring it under 37 degrees Celsius. We're pretty close to the desired temperature. So Toji Nakano tells us to push all the rice into the center one last time and remake the mound. Looks like the Ono Gamma, one of Sado's major sites.
Then we tuck it in tight and put it to bed again. Snug as a bug. Good night, Corgi. For real this time. Day one making sake. The rice steaming, the rice cooling. Fantastic talk about the history of Gakogura and our first taste of Korji action in the muro. Cannot wait for tomorrow. And that's a wrap on day one. An absolutely incredible experience. The adventures continue on day two. Rice washing, visiting Obata Shizol's rice field and tending to our Korji. Join us, making sake on Sado. <laughs>